What's, What's up? up? This is Draco. And this is Alicia. And you're and now tuned in to OD, OD Podcast. Podcast. Oh, <laughs> Period. Hey, Draco. And we on. And we on deck. Hey. And we still sh- shining. shining. Now well, you gotta shout them out because. Shout out to the shot boys. Yeah. First of all, you know, they used to be my so Oh my god. I think god. it was your ringtone on your phone. At one Let me point. tell you something. Still Shot by Shot Boys is my, <laughs> my favorite motivational song of all time besides DG Yola. I ain't gonna look it up. Let me tell you something. Still Shot. If you out there committing crimes, this song gonna make you stop. <laughs> <laughs> he said some of that song about um, reversing his family curse. And I'm like, that's deep for somebody from the hood. I mean, realistically, I feel like they probably all feel like that. They just don't know how to stop. <laughs> it's like, I don't want to shoot this man and rob him, but I don't know how. When my blessing ain't came yet, so I got to make I it gotta go. I got to keep going. Sorry, Dang. sir. Boom. Boom, boom. Shoot. Let me get on. <laughs> okay. Maybe I should have made a joke of this. No, you're right. All right. So, hey, y'all. Hi. So, you know, we haven't recorded since we went to um, Revolt Summit and Music Midtown. Totally forgot. Oh, my God. So, every time people ask me about it, I'm like, honestly, the podcast is really... (laughs) 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 It's been taking me places in my wallet. Good night. (laughs) Yeah. So, um, we ended up going to Revolt Summit first. I only could go two days. Alicia went three. So, she got the full experience. The full experience, but not really. Yeah. Um, Oh. Like I was saying, she went there three days. I only went two. I went to Thursday and Sunday. And... Um, Thursday and Saturday. Thursday and Saturday. Sorry. Dang, did you go for real? I did. <laughs> um, it was it was fun. I feel like it was a very for me. Uh, the experience was really. I don't even. This may sound bad, but it wasn't as informing as I would like it like it to have been. However. I was introduced to a lot of people that I didn't know, and then I had to do my own research on my own and see what type of, you know, where they came from, what they did for real. Because I really couldn't pay attention. It was kind of loud in a lot of those things, so it was, like, distracting. Yeah, a lot of talking. I yeah. will, Was this the first one? In Atlanta, I want to say it was. Oh, yeah, I think it might have been in Miami before. I will say it definitely was noisy, and I think that, um, like, I think the best sound was when we were in the smaller theater. So yeah, I think yeah. that the first the the main stage was very warehousey and maybe they just need they got some opportunity there as far as like um the sound absorption and air. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely air. Cuz the small room that's the room that Jadena was in, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So that was Yeah, I mean, more I like that room. Down. I do I um I did like what uh Jadena had to talk about, but I feel like it's something that he always discussed. It's not nothing really new. Yeah, but maybe some but, people hadn't heard it yet. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. For oh. me, I was speaking for my experience. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Read me. No, it wasn't a read. <laughs> um, wow, it doesn't But stop. I did have a lot of fun. I did meet um, some people from Instagram that I knew and I haven't met before. Sometime, some of them I met seven times. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So oh, If um, you know, you know. <laughs> if you know, you know. But, um, yeah. So It was pretty cool, though. And then um, I will say the highlight of it was just learning about who Tamika Mallory was. Really? That's I've been good. on her page every day since really? that. Really? Let me yeah, tell you something. She has I a lot to her. say, and I'm here for it. I um, You know what? For me, I do think it was centered around music. But I will say there were a lot of gems there for content creators as far as, like, work ethic and, more honestly, inspiration. Some people, I, yeah. like, it was really dope to me to see people like... Um, uh, Dia Sims, who I had never heard of, and I don't know how ashamed yeah, I should Dia be Sims, for that. I forgot about her too. And how she started off as an intern, yeah, like for uh, Diddy. It's not like she was an intern for his assistant, mm. and then she now she's like the president. Not even like she is the president of uh, Combs Enterprises, and she's about to go into the CBD venture with him. And I believe I don't know if they did the press release by now, but I remember them mentioning something like making sure they employ people who have been convicted for marijuana related charges, which I think is super dope. Yeah. But yes, I agree. We met a lot of people and um, saw a lot of people we knew, and uh, it was cool. I just like the environment. I love um, like environments like that where it's like informative. There are a lot of like high level people, but it's not like a groupy setting. Like people were super chill. Yeah. When we first got there, and it was just people walking around. It was like, hold up, ain't that, ain't that? Come yeah, up. yeah. It was. Yeah, it was really fun. That's all I got to say. <laughs> well, <laughs> so thank no, you, it was uh, it was like Diddy, for people. the opportunity. Who Diddy? I was thanking Diddy for the opportunity. Um. 
And then we went to Music Midtown. Shout out to Eb. She hooked us up with. Appreciate that. Artists, guest passes, baby. We didn't get to use it because they was asking for too much. But <laughs> it's the thoughts that count. It's okay. We love, we know what to do next. <laughs> yeah. It was so much fun, though. I think we got there at the perfect time. Yeah, I agree. We got there at like five on that Sunday. And we watched Black, which is like one of my favorite singers slash rappers. Yes. Black, Leon Bridges, Billie Eilish. Billie Eilish. Travis I'm a new Scott. person of it. Like new, like I don't really know much about Billie Eilish. Me either, but I can say that I saw her perform. Same, <laughs> um, but I love Travis Scott though. That was why I really wanted to go. I'm mad I miss Lizzo and Cardi B, but I really wanted to see them. I, I saw Travis Scott and which was he did VB good. lit. Yeah, it was so lit. It was too too lit. Too. That was my first time being amongst that many non African Americans, and I had a great time. I'm not even gonna lie. Besides to you. the fact that all the white people were saying "nigga." Oh my god! First of all, <laughs> one of the things I thought about before we even before I even knew we would be going to music midtown is like those kind of environments. I don't want to hear white people saying the n word. Like it's just not okay. It and it and then, was like almost it. Well, it was it was nothing we can do about it. Literally nothing. It was I will like, say when I played a video back, the crowd volume went down a little bit when that word came on but it definitely was still some some noise and it wasn't for no black folks because i ain't see too many of us out there yeah we <laughs> definitely was outnumbered and nigga was definitely being said that's all i gotta say um the when we got there, was though, there we was pulling up we definitely saw people breaking in oh yeah um, the festival i forgot um, about that yeah if y'all I, saw the video those kids jumping over the fence we were right there I'm oh, surprised the we video? oh yeah the georgia followers page posted it i'll send it to you okay i yeah, was like we, why we didn't make the video because we were basically behind a darn camera they did it right in front of us like it's the, like they waited until we got right there to that spot and then they just did it they it were like all right look out for alicia and draco from od podcast and then we're gonna jump <laughs> Bruh. Speaking of OD podcast, y'all, guess what? We got our first check today. Bro. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So we are officially a paid podcast. podcast. We have we a stream of income from this podcast. So yes. for everybody who said ain't no money in podcast, you a lie. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Which it because of that, I want to let you know that this episode of every episode <laughs> is brought to you by Audible yes. for a free thirty day trial and a free book on us. Please go to audibletrial.com slash OD podcast. Um, and when you sign up for OD, we, when you sign up for Audible using our link, you are su- su- not only supporting the podcast but supporting and expanding your library. Period. Yeah. Thank you. And I, um, a cool thing about Audible too, for real, for all just aside, is um, when you use the trial, even if you decide you don't want to use it anymore, you don't get charged anything, but you get to keep your book. And mm. so, let's say you just that's just one book you want, and it you know it is what it is. You don't care about Audible, that's fine. We still gonna get paid. So uh, yeah. <laughs> download the book, listen to it if you like it, resubscribe. But I really, really, truly do think it's a great resource for books. I um I have every time I've listened to a book on Audible, I have bought the book as well I, I, for whatever reason. I don't know. It's really stupid, but I actually do pay for Audible, and I actually do listen to the books when I'm at work. And it's a super dope concept, and I hope that most books that are available can be accessed on there because there is a process for doing that. But super Cool. Mm, so what did you do with your check? Uh, I put in my savings. Oh, can't say the same. What you do? Bought some JJ's? I bought... <laughs> I actually am not eating JJ's at the moment. Um, I actually <laughs> bought um, some perfume. Ooh, what kind? So I discovered this company from Instagram. Of course, those little Instagram ads I always get you in. But it's a company called Dossier. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a UK brand. Hold and up. Basically... They do podcast ads. So if Dossier, if y'all listening... They do? Yeah, they do. I heard, I heard them on a the podcast before. Okay, So if cool. y'all can sponsor some episodes, appreciate that. We want to keep the chats coming. Well, I signed up for their influencer program, so hopefully they um, there you go. approve it. So, yeah. But, anywho, they have... So, basically, what it is is a company that provides fragrances that are vegan and um, they're not as harsh as regular perfume and they're cheaper so it'll be like a, a perfume that would normally cost like 140 and it's 29 dollars. wait what but makes they, a perfume vegan um it does it's paraben let's read it how about that let me instead of me going each one teach one yeah each one teach one so basically um i'm guessing the ingredients that are in maybe they're not test on animals like, Definitely not. Mm-hmm. Um, I did. I did read that, but I know that um, you know how some people sneeze, like with a lot of fragrances and stuff like yeah. that. I feel like it's um, okay. So it it is the affordable alternative to designer perfume for one. It's vegan and cruelty free, 
And what I like about them is that they know for a fact that you don't know how it smells for real. So they send you a tester bottle and a real bottle. And if you don't like it, you can send it back for free. And you can keep the tester? You can keep the tester, yeah. That's cute. Yeah, I heard about um, that before. I'm not, you know, I'm not big on fragrances, but there was this one I just um, discovered recently. Um, I was in, I think it was Bloomingdale's at Perimeter Mall. Anyway, there's a Givenchy um, perfume that is apparently made by Meghan Markle's, like, designer. Honestly, I felt like the girl's name dropping just so I could feel like I should buy it. Oh but God. it actually smelled really freaking good, and I'm going to buy it. And I would share the link, but they haven't paid me yet, so... Now, it ain't nothing free. Oh, my God. Unless you hot, like, hot, like, you ain't getting nothing from yeah, me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's from Europe, and it says it's been tested for all day wear, so it lasts all day, which is good, because I think that I have, I, what I'd like to do is buy minis of stuff, and I keep it in my little bag. I have, like, three in there, but I ain't going to tell you which one I got in my bag now, because they ain't paid me. <laughs> it's amazing quality. We'll see when it gets here, because I haven't tried it yet. And it's vegan and cruelty free, so it's twenty nine dollars for a bottle. Um, I mean, I think that's a great that's a great price for any perfume. Uh, yeah, and then the, the fluid ounces I was comparing it to like the sizes of the regular bottle. It was more in a bottle. Oh, turn up! There we go. So uh, we'll see. Do you have a, a hotline highlight? Mm hmm. Okay. Oh yeah, you so, should. Shout outs to my homie Jazz. First of all, Jazz been braiding my hair when, when I had my hair the first time. Um, unfortunately I <laughs> was hard headed and I went to my other hairstylist, Shamir, um, who <laughs> colors my hair and he told me, he was like, please do not do, make me do this. Cause I wanted platinum hair in one day and I, I know that you can't color your hair platinum in one day, but he did it. It was my birthday. I really wanted it. But anywho, my hair fell out. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to like, stop going to jazz to get my hair. Oh my god! Well, you had to cut your hair off, or you just had to. Yeah, I cut it off. So um, it didn't immediately fall out. It took about four months, mm. and it was because I didn't keep up with it. Um, he wanted me to keep coming in for like trims and to get. So it's this thing called Olaplex. I don't know. What, yeah, I've seen that before. Okay, so Olaplex is basically a system with hair that um they call it like a, I don't know, but. I don't know, but it's like it's, <laughs> you mix it in with. I don't know if they. I don't know if they have their own brand of bleach, but you mix it in with your bleach, and it actually makes your hair stronger than what it was before when you bleached. Oh, it, it. restores it really. So yeah, okay. but it makes it stronger, and it's expensive. It's a hundred dollars just for the treatment. So you, so your hair got bleached, it got damaged, and then you use the Olaplex. No, I use the Olaplex to bleach my hair. Oh, got it, got but it. But when you do use Olaplex, you have to use the third step, which is like a conditioning step. Mm-hmm. You have to use that in order to maintain it, and I didn't buy it. Oh, so, did he tell you to buy it? Yeah, he did. Mm. Yeah, it wasn't his fault at all. <laughs> no, I, feel I definitely didn't, tr- like, I, yeah. Anywho, but and anywho, this isn't I'm when back. you had that teal hair, is it? No, this no, no, no. This was way after. That teal hair was the first time I colored my hair, and I colored my hair maybe... Five times after that, because I had teal, lavender, gray, orange, Tay. and <laughs> then I had platinum, and that was the last color I did was platinum. But um, my hair is finally long enough again. I'm not coloring it. I'm not coloring. I'm putting no color, no bleach on my hair. It's healthy. I want to color long. my hair so bad. Don't do it. It's you know what though? It. I remember if you do it, do it brown. Yeah, and you don't. Have, I don't. I think that you could do those kind of colors without bleaching your hair. Yeah. In college, I used to. Box and bleach my hair all the time. And oh, when I yes. tell y'all, I could have had baby hairs by how much my edges broke off for real bad. Yeah. I remember one time right after I washed the stuff out, my edge was really, my like the first centimeter of hair was like a centimeter long. Like it was like legit. Like I had like a little mohawk on my edges. Oh no. <laughs> I know. And I'm just like, what I do wrong? But honestly, I didn't know nothing about hair back then. I was getting relaxed. It was like it just was all a hot mess. But, but no, jazz. I do think about um coloring my hair now though. Color it. But I think that you definitely should go to a professional and don't, ble- don't bleach it. <laughs> um, but jazz, um, she did my hair. She used to do my hair all the time. Like, I used to get my hair braided maybe once a week. If I had small braids, I would go every two weeks. But she bra- she's back from maternity leave. She is in Mableton, but it's like Veterans Memorial, so it's oh, not far. is she in those lofts? No, she's at Escape Hair Salon. And okay. Escape, if it's the same Escape from... Back in the day, that is a legendary hair salon. Some of the baddest hairstylists in the game. I don't even remember. Um, 
came from their hair salon, like even T Boss. T Boss actually worked there as a shampoo girl. Oh, really? Back in the day? Back in the day, yeah. Sham- Escape, TSC, I mean, WTF. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. I, um, actually, Jazz It Up was the, like, when the braid trend came she back, was the first she one. was the first one and the best one. It's the best. Like, like for real. <laughs> people, I feel like she, now I could be wrong, but I feel like she was the one that created that style with how your hair is. It's like, you could see every parting in her grabbing your the, hair. The um, stitch braids. Is that what it is? Yeah. I had never seen nobody doing that until I saw her. And then after a while, other styles started picking it up. But I'm like, y'all had to get it from Jazz It Up. Had yeah, to. Yeah, she definitely started that wave here in Atlanta because nobody was braiding hair for real, for real like that. And I was getting my hair braided before her, but I was just letting my friends do it. But when she did it, it hit different. Oh, definitely different. I ain't <laughs> gonna lie to you. Different. I used to go to stylists that cost cheaper to try to get that look. And they did it, but her stuff be so pristine. Like, I think it had faith. Yeah. 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 And she, um, it definitely, <laughs> yeah. She <laughs> took her time and parted. The way she parted my hair today, it was like crazy. the Red Sea. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot. What's um what's her social media? So her Instagram account is yeah, underscore jazz it up. Okay. And I'm gonna also put it in the um episode description. Yeah, so it's gonna be in the description, but my girl is lit, okay? Okay, so shop talk. Um What you got for us today, Leash? You know what? I I don't really have something like pop culture, but okay. I do wanna say that um I found a therapist. And I had to find another one. <laughs> you fired her. Yeah, I had to fire my therapist. So, and it wasn't like no disrespectful zone. I just was like, you know, I don't know if I want to continue. So I'm just going to cancel this appointment. And so you got another my- one? Yeah, kind of. So, okay, let me just give you a quick run now. So I have always been told that sometimes it could be complicated to find or difficult to find like a good therapist because, you know, we all have our own needs, own personality, things that we expect from an experience. And I'm very picky about everything I do. Especially when it comes to building relationships with people, and I just Same, feel like girl. my the therapist that I had, quali- she she was more fit for people of a different dynamic. <laughs> oh, okay. And so there's a couple of things that came up that that were red flags. I'm not really going to share them because they probably are a little rude and um, um, condescending. Oh, or so? elitist so <laughs> oh, but i just decided that she was not a good fit for me so i have found someone else but they actually are not black nor a woman and oh. uh, right can you believe that so yeah it's just this um older guy and he spent most of his career as a neurologist and i have a friend who referred me to him and then i found i met her aunt who um who works with me and she goes to him and she's like a whole family goes to him and the things that they explained to me about how their first sessions went is what i expected from my therapist and i'm like you know i really want a black woman but i am not like i'm not gonna not go to therapy because it's not that and if i know somebody has the experience that i'm looking for then i'm gonna give it a try so mm. let's see how that goes i actually want to I, first of all i need some insurance i already know don't start ah, but, um, <laughs> i wouldn't even gonna say that then hey, uh, put ham on it. <laughs> <laughs> i want to start going to therapy um for sure i feel like i got a lot of things to get off my chest but girl I can only imagine how hard it is to find a therapist because, like you said, you just need to be have somebody comfortable. I think, personally, I would want a gay therapist because I think I need somebody that kind of... A black gay therapist, and put that out there. Mm-hmm. Um, because I need to have... I feel like I need somebody that have the same shared experiences. Yeah, me. I agree. That's why I wanted a black so, woman, yeah. but I feel like the stuff that I have to talk about is not specific to gender or um, ethnicity. So okay, it is what yeah. it is. I mean, not me either. I guess most of the, most of it, but um, yeah, I don't know. It can happen. I think I think that um, I mean everybody's just so different, and it's just hard. My whole thing is I just don't want to be like going crazy, opening myself up to these people back to back to back. Thankfully, things didn't really get deep with this therapist. It was like preliminary questions, but it continued to be preliminary. And I'm just like, all right, sis, we on week three. Like, what's good? But <laughs> yeah. that's really it. What you want to talk about? Well, before I start, I want to just say that I am removing the term POC, um, people of color, out of my vocabulary. I'm just going to say black. I'm just say black. Now, some people are of color, but they're not black. But when you say POC, are you saying that you're only talking Most about Most of the people? time, I mean black people. I got you, though. Okay. So, I'm going to just say that. That's fair. Um, <laughs> what do I have today for shots out? Um, I see that Megan Thee Stallion is nominated for five BT Awards, which is good. Oh, five? Like that. That's five. Five. I'm, Come on now, I'm so Meg. happy for my girl. Um, Meg the pig. Let's see. 
in non-Kardashian news. Oh, boy. Um, Did you see that football player? I think his name was Larry Williams, I think. He was talking about she sacrificed her mother for uh, success. Yeah, she and she got him together. She and he came back talking about, oh, all y'all DMing me, talking about, I'm talking about her because I want to smash. I smash this girl, this girl. I'm like, these are the same girls that everybody People smash. are so weird on social media. Very weird. It's like, sir, you're actually not <clears throat> making the situation better. You're looking weirder. So, y'all, yesterday I finally met the guy who everybody said I look like, Eric and Tay. <laughs> uh, I met him. We didn't really meet. We spoke to each other. We were it was in passing, but I was at this salad place in Bucket and Chop. I don't like Chop. Okay. You like Chop? Uh, I I I do. I do think it's, it's one is it it's not that far from here, huh? It's not. It's off Roswell Road. I mean I don't live that far from Buckhead, if that's what you're saying. Oh, it's another one. It's in Decatur. Oh, okay. It's on that was like probably North closer. Decatur Road. Oh, okay. Yeah. So um so y'all did, he, did you tell him that people said y'all look alike? No, I was on the phone. So oh. I didn't wanna, and he was with a group of people so I didn't wanna look you know, weird, but <laughs> we kind of gave each other that look like, but, hey. <laughs> do you still look at the friend zone? Because Dustin has a segment every week where he says two people look alike. That'd be funny if he said uh-uh. that. Oh, nah. Anyway. Um, what else happened this week that I've seen? Um, the girls are on drugs this week. Honey, they've been on drugs. Azalea Banks and what's Kaya. Going what's going oh, on with Oh, my them? God. Um, so, let's start with Azalea Banks because I feel like the Kaya thing require more detail. Oh, yeah. So, with Azalea Banks... Um, she just, for some reason, anytime a woman comes out with anything, whether it's a singer, rapper, anybody, she always has to put her two cents in. I mean, even which newborn is babies fine, but seems. I'm like, sis, make a blog or do something I, yes. if you, if you feel like that's what you want to do. But I think that her platform is way too big for her to just be, especially if you're trying to have a career of your own. And everybody's going to have an opinion behind closed doors, but it, everything don't need to be said out loud. Yeah, I agree. I honestly think that something really happened to her. Like, in the industry, like, I feel like some people did something to her. Because she always talks well, about... Well, she talks about different situations that has happened to her. Like, yeah. the stuff with, um, Ru- is it Russell Crowe? Russell Crowe. Ju- and then Juicy she said, J? even with Rihanna right. and Kanye West. And I they might was be a- wrong about the Juicy J. It was, yeah, pro- I don't, I didn't hear nothing about Juicy J, okay, but... Okay, never mind. Um... With Rihanna and Kanye, she said that they, like, basically locked her in the basement. They put her down there with some peanuts and some water and had her writing music. Because, of course, Rihanna doesn't write her own music. And Oh, really? Oh, wow. The girl, okay. You see how much of a big deal it's not? What? Like, I don't care that she doesn't write her own music, but people try to add that as if it's, like, a requirement factor to be successful. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. A lot of people don't. I mean, nobody writes their music in the industry for real. Oh, Nicki Minaj does. She does. I mean, cause I mean, it, it's, no, I'm it's just better when you do. But I think that I think that all artists that write their music always says that Mariah Carey. She loves to th- to throw in the yeah, fact that she writes her music. Yeah, I think it's definitely an added benefit. That's one less person you got to pay. I'm just I just always say that I don't it think it's a matter. big deal. But yeah. people seem to be like, oh, she didn't write her own music. I'm like, I think y'all it's read different when it when it comes to rap. But the thing about it is, if you're gonna do that, the girls you need to do it to men. Period. So. That's my whole. That's my biggest thing about it. Most of y'all favorite new artists don't write their songs. I'm gonna say it was already. The guy popular. rappers don't write their music at all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's just like if you're gonna do that and hold that, uh, the women to a high standard, you need to do that to guys. So that, Keep let's that just same start there. Energy. But I think that she she's talented. I do like her music, and I feel like she is just um, butt hurt because her career is where it is, and I think that she just had a bad experience with Hollywood and she's scarred like on top of her doing drugs so every time she sees somebody get ahead of her it just makes her sad and she just lashes out but she was just watching the Rihanna Savage Fenty fashion show and just talking so much crap about it and of course Rihanna has gained weight is rumors saying that she is pregnant they've been know. saying that for so long yeah I mean but even in the last couple of pictures and so she's been covering up her belly which is kind of questionable but, yeah, like, Azalea Banks got online and she was just talking about her being fat and that she don't have no edges. And she was butthurt because Rihanna had shared a picture of, of her a long time ago of her edges as a joke. And she just like, y'all was talking about me and Rihanna don't have no edges and she's fat. And da, da, da. she was just mad. And she was just saying basically how, um, <laughs> it's not funny, but she was saying that, um... 
everybody who Rihanna was beefing with has glowed up past her. So she was saying like, look at Tiana Taylor. Tiana Taylor has a family and kids, and her body is banging. Why and, does the, why is that considered a glow up? Though everybody don't want kids. First of all, yeah, that's not she, a comparison. And then she was saying the same thing with Sierra. She was like, look at Sierra. Sierra looks good. She has a family. And blah blah blah. And she they think they have in. built up past Rihanna. That's what she said. She Girl. said that she said that she said that Sierra is married now, and with her and Russell put together, she now has more money than Rihanna. She's worth more money than her. Oh She's like, God. so how does that feel? Yeah, well, what are Rihanna's you doing? Rihanna's person. Mrs. I feel like just just don't care. Yeah, and she and, shouldn't. And I like Rihanna because Rihanna, when she does clap back, it's gonna be real smooth. She's just such a Pisces. She has Sorry tweeted to something. That man. She said something the other day um, on her Twitter that said um, something about her being fat. I feel like it was towards as a, a bank stuff. Yeah. Um, but. <clears throat> Yeah, somebody got to get some I just some don't help. understand. Okay, this is my thing with her. And I don't even keep up with her. The only things I know is when I see her in the blogs. It's one thing if you are doing just as well as these people. But you literally yeah. have only attacked people that are doing better than you. She That's why she do it. And then when you try to have a moment of shine, you you play the victim. It just does not make sense. And it's like you talk all this smack, but then you go on stage. And, and cry. You, yeah. Talk, like, girl, it doesn't even make You always make it sound like somebody's bullying you. And, I, and then even the whole, oh, everybody you came up with is doing better than you. Like, really define doing better. Like, what is that? Because to me... Tiana Taylor, Rihanna, and, and Sierra are all very successful. And I would never even... Yes. I feel like they're not even on the same playing field to even be comparing the level of success. And it's definitely not a measurement when somebody has a family or kids. Like, it's not even that serious. Granted, if that's something you've always wanted and you got it and you got the career, that's success, for, success to you. But I don't think that that is something that you should use against somebody unless Rihanna was like a flop and Fenty wasn't doing good and um, sad. You know, it just it doesn't make sense. Yeah, she clearly has a mental issue, drug problem, And that's going to be the reason to hold her back. Bro. Continue. I mean, I I feel like well, at, at this, this point, point she's it's done. done. Yeah. yeah, she's done. Like I feel like nobody is even going to, and I think that's why she's doing it. Nobody's going to pay attention to her again. Like she's done. Um, she need help though. Period. I think that with Kaya, I don't want to necessarily say it's different, but I do feel it's different because I think Kaya knows better. Definitely. I think that she, her situation, and it, it's just me looking from the outside. So I don't know the facts, obviously, but. Just me outside looking in. She doesn't seem like she had have a drug problem. She just seemed like she's genuine. But you know, Kaya been this way women. since she's been like that before forever. Before social media, yeah, she's <laughs> always been that way. Mm-hmm. And I ain't gonna lie, it was funny. I definitely watched a lot of her videos because, I mean, realistically, the stuff that she says come yeah, out. Yeah, it's funny. It's it hilarious. Is funny. Like it's funny as hell. But I think I started tapping out um, more recently when she was talking about C. S. Madison. Um, I'm a big advocate for my community. What you be saying? You are a uh, ally? I'm an ally, baby. I sure am. <laughs> I'm a big ally, ally advocate Alicia. for my community. And I've... Because I've said some things about people and the types of people in my community as a younger like child or whatever. But mm-hmm. now that I'm older, I see how detrimental it is. And I just don't like the fact that her fan base and her career is based upon the support of LGBT community. Like, nobody pay attention to you, Kai. Nobody listen to your music. Literally, the only thing that's made her relevant is her trolling. Like, trolling, and then, like, her folks. songs are be- constantly being played in gay clubs. In that's Atlanta. the crazy thing. My thing is that she always want to bring up butt sex and HIV. Like, girl, that's not even cool. She's, like, she's like a female hotel. A song? Whatever that is. A, that I is know what you problem. mean. A yeah, hotel is just like def- a ultra woke. Girl, and it's so <laughs> stupid. Like, I hate the fact that she just does that. And then the fact that she was talking about T.S. Madison telling... And you need to watch her words. What did like, she say about her? First of all, she said that um, T.S. Madison was... T.S. Madison is a, preview, a prior porn star. Okay, we all knew this. Like, mm-hmm. she's definitely open about her past life. But um, she was saying that she'd be recording porn still in her basement. Like, dude... Having all type of... Well, she got a job. What you doing, sis? Yeah, I mean... And, and she was saying that... She, that the lady was... Having sex with, like, underage boys and all sorts of... Like, she was insinuating that. And yeah. I'm like, you need to watch your words. But because you know, if that's not true... Then you... You definitely can ruin her... Yeah, that's definitely can ruin her career. And I think that's what she's trying to do. Then she was talking about her mama. Her mama is in a wheelchair. Um, she she's taking too mama, far. And she was saying how... Yeah, she was just talking about her. And then she said something about Trina, Trina's mom, mother. Yep. And she keeps and saying And she was talking it. about the funeral. I'm like, girl, who are you? Yeah, she was on the most. But I don't think... I think at this point, 
the world has us, you know, a weird taste in their mouth about Bobby Lights. I know I do sometimes because he just is it because of the Lil Nas X stuff or because I um, I think that what it is is that I us as a gay black community, it just seems like we can't get people to uh, get us on TV and in higher places without being a coon or without being like extra and yeah. messy. And it just seems like he falls into that narrative and it's so annoying because yeah. it's just like... I try to believe he wasn't really like that because I, I would listen to his interviews one, like after Love and Hip Hop was over and I'm just like... Oh. Yeah. And it's like you would... It, in, theory you would want to support somebody like that but it's hard because it's just like no so we all have a distaste in our mouth i feel like some most people do but to go as far as to try to say that this man has aids and right. he, him and trina have aids and they out here doing this and that and he need to go get checked out and all this other stuff i feel like that's rude it's going too it's, far it's, it's like girl far. how are you even getting paid let's be for real and then you talking about trina's dead mama yeah that's crazy like that's talking low. about her funeral i'm and pretty sure she, kaya got some own, her own family issues that people probably didn't want to she, be around her girl, so she, she got I, I remember <laughs> when i knew that this lady was crazy when i think i talked about this before but she was saying that um how her uh, conscience brothers that's what she called them she needs to say hotel her conscious brothers <laughs> that be around her tell her that um, they ask her all the time why she be hanging around sissies and oh fags God. and all this other stuff they like why she hang around them and she and he was saying that um what she was saying that the guys were just saying basically like it's a mental disorder they have sex with their rectum the rectum is oh connected to the spine spine is connected to the brain and blah 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 <laughs> I swear this my is her words. My coochie atta- attached to my butt and my spine. So, Something wrong with me. Yeah. That, I <laughs> promise you that came out of her mouth. And I'm looking like. Oh my God. Wow. Girl. Meanwhile, she probably. Okay. Anyway. That's crazy. I'm not with it. It's not even okay. I saw the video this morning and my mouth was on the floor. I could not believe that somebody could even spew these kind of words. Yeah. I was like, oh my God. Kaya I just Denise. can't imagine this like a somebody that much that I'm even going that hard. Like it's just not even. I wonder messy. what Trina did to her to make her feel like that because that she just despises her. Every time the name is brought up, it's just like it probably got something to do with Miami. Ain't Kaya from Miami? She from Tampa. Oh, Florida, Tampa, Miami, mm-hmm. honey. She probably just hang because Trina's a legend. Mm-hmm. So anyway, dang, we 37 minutes in. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. So, let's get into this topic for today. Speaking of shaming and all this other stuff, so our topic today is going to be on body shaming. Yeah. Um, I feel like it is definitely, definitely a topic that needs to be discussed, and not even in just a negative way, because I think that um, people like Lizzo and um, Cupcake and all these other people, they are in the industry now, and they don't have the typical body type that everybody is used to seeing. I think that Nicki Minaj really kind of, um, and I don't want to put this all on her because people were getting surgery before that, but I think that she just was like almost a poster girl for perfect bodies. Because before then, I mean, nobody would think that it was perfect, but realistically, we were looking at it initially when she first came out. It's like, oh my God, she has a humongous ass and it's fake. And to believe it's bigger now. (laughs) Yeah. But you know what's so crazy? I think that because bodies look so ridiculous now, I look back at old pictures of Nicki Minaj and her butt look normal. Like yeah, she yeah, her came, whole body like, looked normal. It, it don't did. even look I that agree. bad. I, I remember when I saw a video. I think it might have been the Five Star Chick era. And she looked normal. Yeah. And I just would have never even thought. Of, I don't even know if I realized her butt was real at that time. Because it wasn't that trendy. But now. I mean, she looks be- much better now. But I feel like that she definitely has some stages where I'm like, alright, sis. Yeah. It's like up and down. But I think that now all the girls that have come in the game have some sort of like enhancement and surgery and they just have to like they have like a, a image to live up to like everybody has to be perfect and then got to get this nip here and, and tuck there but i think that it's important to have people like lizzo and I agree. um different people like that in the industry to make people feel comfortable. It's like, shit, I can make it with this body. You can too. Like, Period. you should just be comfortable in your skin. I'm definitely here for the um the non, the non quote unquote, traditional body. And I don't even mean traditional as in, like, smaller is traditional. But, you know, the image that was always given us in the media. So, I think of stuff like um Target has all, not always. I, I can't believe I was about to even say that. But Target has been featuring models that are, like, different shapes and sizes. Some First of all, have, you need a uh, dad on Target sponsorship. 
I Target, Target. if you listening, we finna. I'm gonna email y'all Pay for me her. Cool. They um they <laughs> have they have models with prosthetic legs. That, oh that really? Have, yeah, like they have uh, visible disabilities models in wheelchairs. Now, obviously, I'm sure that would probably came from like pressure or trends from current um yeah. media. But I just think it's really cool to see that because it's like there are people who are who have prosthetic legs and they want to know how yeah. the dress might look on them instead of seeing it on this skinny girl with two legs. You know what I'm saying? Just little things like that. I think things like that matter. It's just like um. Inclusiveness. Yeah, inclusivity. Because I feel like people talk about representation matters. It really does. Like you think about when Barack Obama became president. Now these little boys are saying, "I'm gonna be the next Barack Obama." Ain't nobody saying they're gonna be the next Bill Clinton. Yeah, it's the next Bill. Uh, I'm about to say Bill Gates. <laughs> well, him too. <laughs> Truth be told, the next Trump. Child. You get what I'm saying? So I think it's really cool to see that. But what I, where I'm kind of, um, my question for this topic is, um, you know, Lizzo is obviously promoting body, body positivity, but people are saying, well, it's not healthy. Obviously, there are uh, there are issues, health issues that come with weight. But it, do you think it's fair to, um, to promote? It, I don't even know if this is a legit question, but should they promote body positivity without also promoting like low cholesterol or Heart. Um, I think that it's also it's it's all a choice. I mm-hmm. think, and and I've grown to accept that too because for a while I didn't see a problem with it. Yeah, but everybody don't think the way they do, and it's the same thing with people who are vegan and people who, um, I mean, down to hair color and yeah. all the other stuff. I feel like everything is a choice. Sometimes people are comfortable. I mean, they might have moments where they're depressed or whatever, but some people don't want to change. They just like or the body that they in, they or they can't, or you know, they just don't want to. And people have to respect that. It's not somebody else's place to come to you and be like, "Oh, you need to do this." To do yeah, this, I blah, agree. Blah. That's none of you your know what business. I'm saying. It's unless it's. I feel like um, unless it's like a character flaw, like what you shouldn't really. You should really mind your business. Like if oh, I, if somebody's you have being a friend, harmful to others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. If you I have agree. something about yourself that is kind of harmful or is detrimental to people, I feel like it's fine to express yourself and just kind of speak your differences on what they got going on and try to offer them help. But when it comes to somebody's appearance and the stuff they wear and all the other stuff, you just got to mind your business. Like, at the end of the day, she it's knows what she looks like. Business. And it's kids out there who feel uncomfortable when they feel like... They they have talents and they have dreams and it's like I'm looking at these people it. and they look perfect and it's like I will never be able to do that. Yeah. But now that we got Lizzo and I hate to just keep putting her as a poster girl for that, but it's just like I, I mean, but Lizzo literally her she's whole like number one about, on the yeah she's number she just one on broke Billboard. a record for the longest. Uh, is it African American female artist to have a number yes. one? Yes. I don't know if that's the actual accolade, but it's something along the nature of this song. Yeah. I think it's dope. I also, you're right. I think about like times people are like, oh, I can't never be a singer because, I, like, I'd be like, oh, I can't wear that dress because I ain't got no booty. Yeah. And that's just out of that. Now, I've accepted my booty. Even though I talk about alternate all the time, in reality, I should, that should not even be a concern. And somebody might be like, girl, you look good. You look fine. But I'm like, uh uh-uh, uh, because when girls wear this kind of dress, it's because they got this and this and this and that. You know, so sometimes it, when I was younger, that definitely used to bother me. Now, I don't give a darn. But. And they still be insecure. They probably be more insecure than you are. Sometimes I see girls who got way less than me, and I'm like, oh my God, how could she wear that? How? And not saying like shaming her, but it's like, why would she find that confidence at? I don't yeah, look yeah. like that. But I think all that, yeah, all that matters. And it's, I think, I don't know, I don't even know like what I'm trying to get at, but I do think that um, body positivity can come in. I mean, body sh- body shaming in general comes from other areas besides not even just that. It could be people like, um, who don't think they're attractive, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or have some kind of eye feature. Or you might have one leg. You might have yeah. one arm. I think it's really cool to see people doing something in different arenas and, you know, kind of being a role model for that. Now, they might not want that responsibility, but yeah. just think about the difference of, like, seeing somebody who is a little person. Somebody like, um, I think it's, his last name is Daniel, uh, Tyrion from Game of Thrones. I think he was talking about when he got his award, like, being even accepted into this community. It's like, this guy was the highest paid actor on that show. Yeah. Yeah. Do you uh have you ever felt like your like have you ever been like uncomfortable with your image like on a big platform? I'm always uncomfortable with my image. Like now, um well in high school I was way bigger. And Yeah, we both were. Yeah, well, I, was, I think I was smaller in high school. Yeah, you were smaller in high school. But I was like way bigger in high school, so I definitely used to wear like baggy clothes to hide it. And then I slimmed down as I got older, but of course with age I gained more weight. And I'm always trying to find time to, to lose weight just because I'm not comfortable. And it's not because I'm ashamed of my body type because, honestly, I feel like I 
pull in more people at this size than when I was smaller. Okay, talk your ish, Draco. <laughs> but no, I'm I like I like certain clothes. Like I love to look at different fashion styles and all this other stuff, but they don't make a lot of it in my size. And I be want to, I'm like, shit, I want to give a look too, shit. Yeah. So, it's like, <laughs> I need to, I'm like, I need to slim down a little bit. I'm not necessarily 100% uncomfortable with my weight or the way I look, but I'm definitely not 100% comfortable because I definitely know my angles. I know which way to pose. You know, you know them. Let me say something. <laughs> you <laughs> know your this. angles. You know mine too. I be like, yeah. hold on, how you get that to look like that? But do you think that, that knowing your angles is a part of being ashamed of your body though? Or is that um, just... Yes and no. But that could be just me because I'm biased because I do it. <laughs> but, um, I, don't, I mean, yes and no. I feel like it is because um, I shouldn't have to do that. I should just be able to pose and do whatever I want to do and just let it all hang out. Because, I mean, this is how I look. And people going to see me regardless. They're going to, yeah. you know, they see what I look like every day. But... Um, I say no because it's just like, of course, when I take a picture, I don't want it to be necessarily perfect, but I definitely want to look good in That's the picture. That's what you want to go for, right? Because a, a picture is a still image, right? This is what I've been thinking about. Like, Instagram has um really brought on the whole body shaming or positivity movement. You think about all the edits and stuff we do to make a picture look good. But when you're in person, think about this. Okay, you know how you leave the house and you might have a hair out of place and you just like pat it down? Yeah. When you get to the car, that hair already came back up. But you're yeah. not even thinking about that. But if it's in a picture, it's kind of like people are going to see this and oh they're going to notice this and this so let me make sure this is the perfect image and we know when they see us in person our belt going to be under our belly button yeah <laughs> but it's just something I that mean, just I mean but it's a picture I, I mean I feel like a picture is supposed to look good okay and yeah, true. some some photographers cuz I've had photographers take pictures of me in ways that I would never take pictures of myself but I liked it because it was in raw form mm-hmm. but I like a little edit i like a little <laughs> I like like a lot of I, edit i like a little light edit if i can get a photographer to take a picture of me and they can clean it up a little bit and whatever just that's just me yeah i think that that like that, that portion exists in all of us i mean we could say yeah. oh i love the skin on me and all the other stuff but we already know we we swipe left for that paris filter pool. uh yeah <laughs> i actually just found out about paris filter recently really it always make my um like my space has dramatically cleared up over the past year but it always gets rid of that last little blemish yeah <laughs> i just found out about it so i ain't know about that but um yeah i mean that's filters are there for us to use why not use them yeah i, I don't mind that i don't shame people for using filters and all this other stuff i feel like when you are using something to alter your image like dramatically to something that you're not then that the may be a little waving. bit excessive yes <laughs> it's a little bit excessive and it's like a lot but for the most part like when i take a picture or when somebody takes a picture you want it to look good i don't mind yeah, it and I then i'm a makeup just... artist too so i'm into like vanity perfection. and perfection so i like stuff like that like what draw me into makeup is like People like Marilyn Monroe. That's why I have her tattooed on me. Um, Marilyn Monroe and you know, I really don't know much Rihanna. About her at all. Monroe. I mean, long story short, she was the that girl. I'm gonna get uh, probably red for this, but she's like Kim Kardashian is like our uh, Marilyn Monroe because she didn't. She didn't. Well, the thing about Marilyn Monroe though she is that she actress, actually right? had talent. Yeah, yeah, she was a she was an actress and a singer, um, but. I feel like her her looks like everybody wanted the blonde hair and the mole and the red lipstick and the pearl necklaces and all that other stuff. That was like a trend at one point. And I feel like people like Kim Kardashian and her sisters, uh, well, I won't say her sister. I would say her for sure. <laughs> but um, they kind of like, in the beauty world, they're like the standard of what beauty is and honestly uh, current beauty trends let me just yeah, say no, that I agree. like the trends in I... beauty yeah it's unfortunate because um obviously they have definitely had some work done and it's kind of unrealistic but um they have the money to do that they got the money yeah, to look really the way weird. they want to do and they and they're just really obsessed with being vain and I, I feel like it has definitely had a really 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 huge impact on society. our culture and I society i totally agree you know what i'm saying that's just the downfall of it but like i said me being a makeup artist i the type of beauty that i like i like that extra glamorous look. look and i oh, like okay. that like <laughs> hollywood glam like that's always been my style that's always been something that attracted me so i like that 
Have you ever been on, and I know a specific person, that I feel like we mentioned her recently, but I went on her IG yesterday. I feel like the Kardashians introduced that urban IG model look to white girls. Have you, um, all right. Kylie in particular, because I don't even think that Kim really, because the thing about it is, I don't think that Kim intentionally, like, tries to look ghetto or act ghetto. She just, like, she just, she just has a big ass, and, like, her style isn't really overly, I guess, I don't know. I think that Kylie Kylie, doesn't have a, she never has a more urban look. Kylie has an urban look, and she, like, even down to her poses. Yes, and and that's exactly what I mean. Yeah. I've seen so many white girls who pages I've come across, and I'm like, I know they're not trying to be black, but it gives black vibes. And I'm like, where they get yeah. this from? But I'm like, probably the Kardashians. But I feel like they introduced that look to a culture that never was even thi- like it used to be shamed on white girls to have big butt. They used to call it they used to call it ghetto booty. Yeah. So they they like having a big butt was fat. It just wasn't a cool thing. I even remember on um, Bring It On where that girl had the yeah, big butt. Yeah, yeah. And it's just so crazy now that like the wide hip, big butt, big lip movement is just like the goal. And I'm like. Girl, who taught you this? Imagine being born with it. <laughs> you know that one filter on Instagram that make your lip look big. Everybody keep using. It. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's like a. It make your lip, your top lip look like you got surgery. Oh no, I didn't know and that. It I don't like use filters. The, um, th- well, anywho, <laughs> I tried to use that filter the other day and it didn't do nothing. <laughs> it was like, I was like damn, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. damn. <laughs> but um, I'm gonna try to find it. It's on Instagram. I've grown. Well, yeah, it's it's like some bunnies. Gotcha. Okay. Um, but I do feel like that de- definitely had like a big, huge, 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 huge impact, impact on society. Realize. And I think that's why I said I brought up Nicki Minaj because she was like one of the first people that people knew like, oh, she has ass shots. And she yeah, had, people you know were what denying it for a long time because it just was not a realistic thought. Yeah, and nobody really back. thought about it. But I mean, it's definitely been a thing in the underground transgender world because yeah. Transgender women, they not born with the shapes and the body types. So, unless you're Alon- Alonzo Arnold. Alonzo don't have the body like that. He though. don't, but he don't not have a body either. He just has the face. <laughs> okay. He has a man's body. He's still a guy. He, he just still considers get... himself as a yes, man. Yes, sir. I'm really sorry. I hope I didn't strike a nerve. With but, you. no, you didn't. But, I'll, yeah. Anywho. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I think that that's why. Um, and, I, and I also was thinking, because a lot of people be thinking, um... Like, why does Kim always hang around these black girls? And a lot of times, even with Black China, I'm like, they're friends because they kind of have, like, the same... Surgeon. Come, <laughs> not a, well, surgeon, too, but they kind of have, like, similar stories. Um, China didn't have a sex tape, but they have a reputation of being whores of the industry. I do wonder that. Even, like, Lala and all that. I mean, granted, Lala and Monica are, like, BFFs with everybody in the industry. Yeah. But I always wonder, like, how do y'all end up being friends with the Kardashians? Like, does Yeah. This, I like, mean, everybody be friends. I feel like they you? just... I feel like they just, you know... And I was looking at Kim's page the other day. She was on some interview, but she was in a Tupac video back in the day. Was she? She said that she was 14 and she snuck herself onto a video set. Since had a goal and she got it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so she's always had that. She always she knew what she was trying to do. Yeah. She knew what she was trying to do. But um, I'm glad that it is people coming in the industry with realistic looking bodies and realistic features and realistic lives because we have people to actually look up to because for the longest i'm like what the hell is our next generation gonna have to look up to because all we have is surgery bodies all we have is people shaped like uh x chromosomes and (laughs) um you know just fake stuff. I agree. You know, I think about it a lot because um, I can't remember who posted it. One of my friends from high school, I think, basically, long story short, her daughter goes to like a diverse school and I guess white, like, she told her mother she wanted to be a peach girl. Now, peach, she meant like white. Her best friend is white. They have a lot of white friends, a lot of Asian friends. And she, I guess she, because she was kind of outnumbered, she didn't really see the beauty in her skin and how she looked. And that's so sad because I feel like, I was just telling my sister this the other day, I feel like when you expose kids to more things, like different things, they won't, you, it's less isolation, I feel. Like, for example, if somebody has six legs, a kid is not going to make fun of somebody with six legs if they've seen it before. They're like, oh, it's, people have six legs. It's yeah. just, you know, they be over here, they be over there. But I feel like, to, to like really truly like for a kid to be young enough to really think that she's not pretty because her skin is dark it's like really scary 
And I, I think that people underestimate the impact of diversity in um, advertising and things like that. Because it's like, like, you, like they always say, you um, blind have blue eyes. It's like the standard for people. Yeah, people yeah, relate yeah. to white folks, but it's why it's never brown eyes, kinky hair, or dark yeah. skin and stuff like that. And it's like people kind of feel like they they're not going to be accepted in the market because they're not familiar with them. So since since we're on that subject about the hair, how do you feel about the H and M thing that was going on last? Yeah, week? I think that everybody was tripping. That's Same. just what I feel. First of Same. all, before when I first saw the picture, honestly, on God, if I would have seen that shopper, I wouldn't have thought nothing of it. That was a child, number one. Yeah. Number two, that child's hair was natural. Number three, all the kids in that campaign had messed up hair. Yeah. Everybody else went on. I think that people just it, don't look into take, stuff before they say or stuff. Or they probably do look into it, but they know they'll get a reaction off of what they say because... Um, even even when I after I was thinking that H and M had their reaction, I mean their response, and they came with receipts, and I'm just like, okay, see, I knew that. I just didn't see the problem with it. Now, I, like, it's just like now now you're saying that you don't see the beauty in natural hair, like the very yeah. thing that you want them to acknowledge, you getting it, and now you got a problem with it. It just doesn't make sense. It's, I don't. It's yeah. it's, it's a hot mess. Yeah, my hair like that talk- right now. I have conversations with my friends because I think just over time I've just grown to just really be attracted to um, black people. I mean, I know that sounds <laughs> black dumb black. and basic. I know what you mean, but though. I mean like just just, just appreciating black culture as a whole. Same. Like I appreciate guys with locks in their hair because that's our culture. It looks good. I it's like totally agree. Um, because I, I think that. My friends, they see people with like free form locks and certain things that, are like, that? oh, I know he gonna like that because blah blah blah. And I'm like, it ain't even just free form like one they don't keep up. Free form locks are, are when you just let them grow, you don't get them twisted. Got it, yeah, yeah. So, um, like Miami, yeah. <laughs> so, I'm like, it ain't even about me liking them, but I'm like, it, that's bold because it's a lot of people that can't even work jobs because of their hair, yeah. their Talk natural hair. It. You Remember know what I'm saying? Six flags? I got fired for that. The people couldn't have locks. They couldn't have their hair in certain styles. They couldn't have. I couldn't have a hair. line in my head, like, like just a small line cut. My, I got fired for that. Yeah, and I, I think that's so insane. I, and that's why I hate when people, when non African Americans wear these styles, and they can wear braids, and they can wear locks, and it's just cool. It's groundbreaking. It's a trendsetter. You got a do rag. Oh, Tim's are the new wave. And it's like these things are not even allowed in our own community. We have to be cleanly um, kept. With, there's a yeah. there's a grooming guideline for being ghetto black. For, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now, obviously, I do think there's a such thing as hair being untamed, but I don't think it's up to them to determine that. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Like, I do think that there's a such thing as your braids old, sis. And so, yeah. now, her braids could really be old, and we know that, but if her employer is like, you can't come to work, now there's a problem. Now, I think that's there's a gray area with that, but I don't think it's up to them to determine. It's between us. It's our code, just like it's their code, because a lot of them come to work with their hair wet. Yeah. That's ungroomed. You know what I'm saying? So Yeah. In this thing, how about that? I just went out. Let me oh, not God. get into that. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> no, but, but I just think that it's just, and that's another thing why I think that there's opportunity for education because it's like, how are you going to, like, you have a problem with my hair, but I, and I can't have a problem with you. It's almost like you're assuming that my hair is not the way it's supposed to be. I had a, a non African American young lady touch my hair once, and I, I didn't have a problem with it. But she was like, wow, your hair is so soft. I'm like, what were you expecting? <laughs> and I know she didn't mean any harm because I kind of got to know her over time, but she genuinely was like shocked and I'm like that's a doggone shame I yeah. just can't my hair ain't, and that's why I try to make sure people don't use the term nappy and that used to be a, a term that I used growing up but I just kind of realized it's just so negative it's like you have natural hair this is before I even had an appreciation for natural hair when I used to get relaxed and stuff and so like kinky hair was like an ew like a turn off type of thing but I love my hair so much yeah, I'm, that's it's what I'm so saying I've grown to just really like how it looks cause it's like it's, it's almost like a powerful statement. It's it almost is. like I'm bold enough to just wear what the fuck I want to wear. I don't have to conform to wearing straight hair and weaves and wigs. Well, that's I mean, what even the seventies was about. Do. That's why people had afros and they were yes. wearing it. With the, they were picking their hair out because it was their natural hair. And so it's just that's just what I like now, and I would rather have that. And that's why I'm like I'd rather date somebody black to have somebody to relate to. Um, but I'm not opposed to dating outside of my race. Period. Mm, oh well, kinda, I am. But... Kind of. But, <laughs> like I don't, I wouldn't prefer it, but I I rather just date somebody black. And yeah, I, I it's agree. Just, it just uh, I just less. formed an attraction for it within more recent years and more yeah. appreciation. I think it comes it. with maturity and education. You just experience life more. You realize that you realize you are aware of the differences and you don't want any. Yeah, <laughs> it is what it is. 
And I don't like the word woke either. Because yeah. I feel like people use that now as like a read. It's, yeah, it's negative. Like, oh, here she go being woke. Yeah, I don't like that. I've, yeah. I, I do it, think there's a such thing as waking up. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. realizing. But it doesn't have to be. I mean, you could just be educated. And that's another thing, too. I feel like people keep themselves below a certain realm. And they kind of like deny the opportunity to learn more. Because they're afraid of like being too serious all the time. Or too woke. Mm. But there's so much beauty in knowing who you are and where you come from. And having an appreciation for it. And nobody can take away from you. But I think that I will think one of the positive things of social media is pushing that narrative of people just being free to be who they are. Mm. With that in mind, make sure y'all register to vote. (laughs) Register to vote. Because I did. What about you? Period. Anywho, you want to wrap up? Um, Yeah. (laughs) So, (laughs) what I got to say about today... um, I'm going to leave with a few remarks. Just be you. Be comfortable in your own skin. I know that's like a cliche statement, but it's just really comfortable to just know who you are. Be comfortable with who you are. It's so and don't free. let nobody, if it's free and it just, don't let nobody deter your thoughts and make you feel like you got to do anything to your body. You got to look a certain way. I do also promote healthiness. But it's I'm not forcing it on people because I'm not healthy myself. But I'm trying to get there. I just <laughs> want to live an long. King. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm trying to get there. I just I want to live long. I want nice skin. I want nice teeth. So that it, it, yeah, in all aspects, like go to the dentist, take care of your skin, take care of your inside of your body. But also, don't just beat yourself up because you don't look like what you see in the no. media. There is honestly beauty in everybody. I remember when I was in high school, two things happened. So one teacher who we would consider woke, she used to always say, like when somebody said that they have good hair, like she would go off. And I actually remember connecting with her on what she was explaining. Like all hair is good hair. Like what do you mean good hair? So you said that the hair you were born with is bad? Like what's the problem with it? And then I remember when um my Spanish teacher, somebody told her she talked like a white girl because she spoke properly. And she was like, well, what does proper mean? You get what I'm saying? I'm speaking in my native tongue. You speak in Ebonus, that's your native tongue. People that speak in um, Patois, native tongue. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So it's like, don't ever compare yourself and say you're talking white because you sound like you're educated. Because it's almost saying like, you look like young jock. Right, just there and there. <laughs> but it's just like saying that you are inferior to the white man. And it's just crazy. It's just, uh, it's just so frustrating. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Let them know. Um, make sure you guys rate us five stars on the Apple Podcast app before you turn off this episode. Um, please show your feedback. You guys have been, and there are some people that I want to shout out that have been giving consistent feedback besides BB. Uh, I want to <laughs> shout out Luis. I want to shout out, um, Luis from Six Flags. No, from, we used to work together. Oh, the guy, Luis. Do I know him? I want to uh, shout out Audrey. Um, my cousin Cynthia, she reposts this episode every single time. I don't even know if she listen, but I see every time we re, uh, I po- we post the episode, she reposts and shares her story. My little cup, two of my cousins promoters, everybody on their campuses. Um, uh, hold on, it's one other person. The, what's the girl's name that we met at um Revolt Summit? Um, so there's the only lady that we met. I, I'm gonna call her T. We met her at the Revolt Summit. Okay. I'm looking on her Instagram and I don't know if this is her birth name or if this. I'm not sure. And I don't want to mess it up. But shout out to her. She was super cool. We um we had a conversation about working in marketing and all that good stuff. I don't work in marketing, but she did or does. And um, we were just aligning because we actually ended up working for the same company at one point. But um, she sent us some good uh, episode suggestions. I need to reply to her email. I have not forgot about your girl. But thank y'all mm. so much for being so supportive. We've been getting a lot of listeners every week. I mean, even if it's 50 more listeners, I really do notice a difference. We're, about to, we're going to be at 20,000 streams real soon. Mm. We already paid for this. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Anyway, it's been another episode of OD Podcast, y'all. Talk to you next week. See you later. All right, y'all. This has been another episode of OD Podcast. Make sure you guys are subscribed on your favorite platform. And if you're using the Apple Podcast app, rate us five stars, okay? Follow us on Instagram at OD Podcast, or you can follow our individual Instagrams as well. Mine is Draco with a V, D R V C O, and you can follow Alicia at. Uh, dot Leisha. That's U H H dot L I C I A. All right, y'all. Tune in next week for a new episode, and that's just that on that. Period.